So, basalt. It's not the most ideal stone, but it is one of those stones that can be worked. My experiences, I have found varying degrees of basalt, some that's a little bit more finely grained, to some that is just full of potholes, all sorts of little crystals, weird deposits of material on the inside. Basalt is an extrusive igneous rock, and it's produced when magnesium iron-rich lava solidifies after being expelled onto the Earth's surface through a volcano. The 90% of the Earth's surface is basalt, so it's pretty crazy that we have so much basalt on this planet, but it's also the worst stone really to nap. Can you produce stuff? Yes, but it's not really ideal in my opinion when it comes to napping. It has a low silica content between 45 and 55%. With such a low silica content, it makes it less than ideal for napping. However, in some areas of Africa, it was used extensively for a lot of uh, grinding and pecking stones, meaning that it was turned into hafted axes or polished axes, and then were hafted in some sort of handle, and were used to, you know, fell trees and things to that extent. American Southwest basalt is very popular when it comes to something like a mono matate, a grinding stone. For example, here is a basalt mono, goes in the hand. Matate usually goes on the ground, and it's a grinding stone. You can kind of see on mine, and this isn't an artifact, just some basalt that I've picked up and have used for various projects over the years, but it is simply a grinding stone. This is a type of basalt, and over time, it polishes out, it gets smooth. This is what the top looks like in the mono, and just after some use, it's nice and smooth. Even on the interior side, you can see that it's starting to polish out. So basalt, Great for monomatates and for polished axes. Now this is kind of a unique piece of basalt. Uh, this was given to me, the actual basalt was, and then I polished it into a, basically a ax that could be hafted. Took a while to grind it, but it is a smooth igneous rock that over time will absolutely polish out and give you that nice cutting face now, I've never really seen a lot of basalt this color. Usually it's grays and blacks, but for this material, this is just kind of a unique uh, piece. So I decided to turn it into something more long-term like this polished ax. Now, despite basalt being less than desirable in many ways, it is a workable stone. And in a survival situation or even a primitive living sort of situation, you could get your hands on basalt and really build any number of polished tools, polished and ground tools, to monomatates and grinding stones, but you can even work simple projectiles out of basalt. What you will find is in that napping process of basalt, you're gonna get a lot of hinges, you'll get some steps, you're gonna get kind of that irregular sort of shape. You're really gonna get a projectile point that's gonna be uh, less than desirable. So even when I look at this little piece of Pedernales or this piece of Georgetown, it's smooth. Even this piece of dacite here, or this clovis here, all of these are those desirable stones. You'll get hinges, you'll get steps, you'll get kind of just irregular shapes. You'll be trying to throw flakes across, let's say a biface, or you're, you're, you're looking to really just kind of clean it up a little bit. It can be very hard to do with basalt. When we think of desirable stone, we think of waxy, glassy, smooth, and featureless. Well, in basalt, it absolutely is not waxy. It is not glassy. It is somewhat smooth, and you can get pieces that are featureless, but in the grand scheme, it's not the most desirable. Your standard Georgetowns, Pedernales, Keelcooks, Dacites, Obsidians, Buffalo River, any number of stone that has that waxy, glassy, smooth, and featureless characteristic is the most desirable. So let's go collect some basalt and nap some.
Here are some of the basalt that I collected on my trip to uh, New Mexico. Now you can see just in these two right here, there is a difference in quality. This is definitely a little bit more smooth, not a lot of features to it. Compared to this guy right here, you do get some smoothness in areas, but being that this is a, a porous rock, you can get little pockets of crystals and dirt and various things that could throw off some of the napping process. And this piece right here, when you look at it closely, there's little crystals there. It doesn't mean that I couldn't put an edge on this and use it in some sort of survival situation. It's still not gonna break like that traditional Pedernales or that Georgetown shirt. Ugh, when I was out there, I did find this piece of basalt. And this guy, out of all the stuff I had seen, was the most desirable. And when I look at it, it looks like it has some kind of funky layerings. Even right here, I've got a darker band and then a grayer band, and then it travels back to that dark band. What caught my attention was this little natural broken off spot right here. To me, that definitely seems kind of waxy, glassy, and smooth and featureless. So when I look at it in profile, I can definitely see that there's almost three different layers there, maybe even four back here on this side. So yes, this one was heavy, those little smaller pebbles and cobbles weren't so bad, but I'm gonna try and break into this guy and see if we can pull off some decent flakes, maybe something for a hand ax or a hand blade, maybe even a couple projectile points. A little protection on the leg. Yeah. See what we can do into this. Top is just littered with stuff. I feel like this is gonna be taken apart like a multiple layer peanut butter sandwich. One here, one there. One there, it's kind of like the bread. I'm trying to carve out this peanut butter. Pop this chunk off, but there's this big kind of gap right here, and all I'll do is just start that hinge. So, man, I'm gonna break some hammer stones today. Not too bad. Got definitely some of that edge on there, but it is smooth. That's workable. Mm. All of this is just gonna have to be completely removed. So many little pockets and cracks. This side is way smoother. Maybe I'll try and hit this side. Oh. That's not too bad. It's really this edge right here is really the best. This could wind up turning into just a big core to pull off flakes and make little projectiles out of. Yeah, interesting. Nothing but chaos. Let's see if we can manage this a little bit. Ugh. Chew this hammer stone up. Let's see, that might be good. Whew. All right, we, even when we look at this, I've got a bunch of little holes right here. This big crystal sort of thing, sometimes known as druzy. This material on the top isn't bad. I could dig it. Let's get some more flakes. Let's go right here. Okay. Come on, you. Whew. That is nasty. But I feel like that could be a little scoring hand axe. You know, on the top, I'd hold that right there. Let's work that into something. Not bad. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Looks like a jawbone with all the teeth. That's just gnarly. Okay. It is getting a little wavy. It's just horrible material and it's gonna crack. 
this pocket right down in here. I can see a line. Maybe that will help shear this off to potentially do a polished axe out of it. This looks good. That's a good flake. I like that one. Gotcha. Super wavy. This is like a cheese grater of hate and discontent. There we go. Seam running right there. This guy's got this. This end will probably break off, but that's not bad material. Gotcha. Not bad. Not the best. Junk. Wish all of this stone was more like this stone up here. That's way more desirable. This is just full of cracks and crystals. And from this side to this side, you can see it travels through. So you gotta hit it with a little precaution. Some of it. Almost got it. Come on, use. Definitely thin-ish, or not even remotely close. Okay, decent. Man, that's just gonna break right through there. I can see a, a hole here and here, and then a crystal deposit, so like all of that. If I hit it wrong, I could wind up losing it, but oh well. Two things are gonna happen. One, I'll get some of this off. Two, it's gonna break right in half. Oh, slap me sideways. I could polish this. It's the right thickness. This would be a lot of side, a little dip there, but if I hafted it right through there, Three fingers. That would work. Because all that stuff would grind down, that would grind down. 
I could get it. Let's do a little bit. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little maintenance. I think we need to try and get this mess off. Problem is, how I'm seeing it is I got this little bit of a high spot. And to grind this, this would grind down very, very easily. That's nothing too crazy. That's just a lot of rubbing, but I still want a mass if I was to make this into an ax. A hard thing that I see is I got this little high spot here and a little dip right in here. So if I shoot a flake or a flake, a basalt flake, too far, I mean, hopefully it clears that out, but I don't want it to like impact this little pocket where there's a crystal there. But I'll give it a shot. So I think if I try to throw some of my flakes this way, removing this little bit of this mass here, will raise this edge, hopefully allowing me to hit this. Biggest issue is it's right in the midpoint of this ugly looking basalt uh, ax head that could be later ground. I run the risk of just snapping it in half. But, oh well. Well, I guess I'll just uh, leave that for there to be polished at a later date, but the best stone was really up in this front section. You almost see two halves. All this right here that's a little bit more smooth and all this that's really chossy and just gnarly. In a pinch, if you had to fell a tree and basalt was your only option or any sort of undesirable napping stone, this would, uh, this would work. I mean, it's super solid. You can get a general shape out of it, but you could polish it out. You could go from something like this to something that looks like this. This is a polished ax that I've done out in the bush. It requires a lot of time, some good sandstone, uh, some good grinding materials, and a lot of water. Just like you saw this one earlier, that is basalt. You could transform this into something that looks like this. When it comes to some of these flakes, Real simple tools. But even this flake right here, just after a little bit of hammer stone work, little bit of bulb of percussion and I've got a real easy butchering tool. All right, a couple of these flakes, they're not, they're not the worst. I mean, you could definitely slice with them. You could open up a hide, a carcass, anything to that extent. Let's see if we can turn them into a projectile point. This guy for now. as a witch's nose. Ooh. I think just even doing a little bit of the work so far, you can 
you can get some results when it comes to some of the finer flakes. I mean, kind of with the axe and you know, you're dealing with a lot of inconsistencies in the stone, but if you can pull off a handful of flakes, they'll work. Bad. Take the work. I mean, it will definitely create a little bit of a shape for an arrow point. Throw some notches in there, good to go. When you come across some nasty old basalt, when you think about it, it could definitely be worked in some very, very simple tools. Even napping out an ax head, coming up with some simple hand blades, some projectile points. Basalt, yes, don't get me wrong, is not desirable in any way. In a pinch, you could use it. Any number of these flakes could be used to slice and dice. Ancient cultures, would they use basalt? Absolutely. Maybe they used it more of a you know, projectile, I'm in a pinch, I have no other options, then they would go to basalt. But when they were looking for a long-term haftable ax, they'd bust some big flakes off a piece of basalt, get into that bifacial form, and then grind it down until you get that polished ax. Simple cutting tools, not an issue. It will throw a flake, but it's not gonna really give you that waxy, glassy, smooth, and featureless characteristic that we find in most flint napping stone. So that's basalt. We have mass quantities of it all around the earth, but it's the least desirable stone of all. Thanks for watching.